Hello and welcome to episode number nine of the Movie Garage podcast and video. It's definitely number nine. We checked about four definitely. times before, and didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think I had the message you before, and the, the last time you said, no, Jay, honestly, it was eight. So. Yeah, I know. Absolutely ridiculous. I think we said something like number four was number two, and then it's just kind of carried on a trend from there, but now we're definitely <laughs> on number nine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, which is good. Uh, I am Jay, and as per usual, this is Gary. How's it going, man? Yeah, not too bad. Well, I was going to say not too bad, but um, I'm back in work next Monday, so it's 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 going downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, excellent. Um, is it next Monday that you go back? Yeah, is that the 16th? Did you say or something? 13th. 13th. I go back in. So they did try to get me back in on Wednesday on the 8th. Right. My car is not back in nursery till the 13th. So my boss was kind of like, well, should we just say 13th then? And I was like, well, yeah, we'll just say 13th. <laughs> and, and plus, I don't want to go back in a day before my birthday. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was so bad. Like, so your birthday on um, Thursday then? Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. yeah. How, old, how old's that? 36. Oh man, still a year behind me, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> We're only like a month really flat. Sick. It's shit that we still can't really do anything because I'm not chancing going to the pub. Would you risk it or anything this weekend? No, I've not. I'm not in the pub, but we have booked in to go to a restaurant. Oh really? On Saturday, yeah. You see now that that I can kind of understand because I imagine there'll be like proper protocols and everybody will be separate and shit. But everybody going to the pubs and stuff this weekend has just been crazy, hasn't it? I can't imagine yeah. it being worse. Yeah, we had a separate phone call from some house place asking who's going, where you live, oh, all shit. your details, so they know then if on that day someone was in with any symptoms or or have got it, they can ring everybody. Holy crap, so I do feel I, I do feel a bit better about that. Um, no, I'm, I'm all right with the restaurant, and you're only allowed in for two hours at a time, so that's not that's, that's not that's not a big issue. Like one of us is going to drive, so it's because we can't go out after it. Yeah, that's it. So one of us is going to drive, and then we just come home and have some drinks at home. So yeah, that's it. Um, I mean, like I've been on to a couple of uh, our mates, and they're on about trying for the 25th of this month going into town, maybe. But um, it's going to see. So that's like, so after the pub's opened, I think that's going to be the third weekend after the pub's have opened. So we're hoping is like everybody gets out of the system nice and early. And before we actually do decide to go out or not, we'll be able to see whether there's been like a massive spike in cases or some yeah. of the those lines. So at the minute we're playing it by ear, but uh, yeah. Some things need to calm it down though, because it did go a little mental in some places. And they just end up getting shut down and yeah, yeah. people are just going to spoil it for the rest of them, aren't they? Yeah, exactly right, man. It's not going to it's not going to get us to where we need to be any quicker, is it? <laughs> no, no, definitely people not. Fucking lunatics. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, so uh, that's the fun over then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah, that's the fun over. I I thought, oh, I'll just treat it as a mini holiday, but it's it's feeling like a long Sunday. <laughs> Because I mean, <laughs> I've been off for that long, it's starting to feel like a really long Sunday. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, every night not, you go to bed panicking. <laughs> yeah, it's not feeling like um, a mini holiday at all. You know, mm -hmm. you can, I said to Lisa, I said, that's it, that's the end of getting randomly pissed on a Tuesday. Oh man, got it. <laughs> um, it's like, you know what, the, the, seriously, the most depressing thing I found about going back to work. It's just like normal. It's it's like nothing's fucking changed. It's really really weird. No. Um, like just driving about and going everywhere. It's everybody's just getting on with it and going about the business. It's like nothing's different until you get to like somewhere like um like a dealership or something along those lines, and they'll have like a one way system in place or something like that. But besides yeah. that, you it just you just go back to work and everything's normal. You're expected to be like this big thing, but then. <laughs> yeah exactly i get like the conversation with my boss was kind of like right closer to the time we'll go through details so i'm like thinking so is there much change really mm. but then the conversations about people that's already back that all that's really changed is how you get about your day how like like you say with all the one-way systems in work yeah. 
and that is about it really so I'm not sure many how many details he needs to go through that I know where if an arrow points one way you can go <laughs> yeah, you, know, you just want to follow the arrow I'm pretty yeah like, I'm pretty go, I'm pretty good at that going to supermarkets has been like really good practice because they've all got all my systems <laughs> in, haven't they? as long as you yeah. can do that you'll be fine you'll live um, another thing that I'd like found really, really weird is I thought work were going to like <clears throat> ease me back in, you know, give me like really, really local jobs to do and stuff like that. But no, nothing like that. I'm like the second day I was back to work, he sent me to London for three days. So trying to find a hotel near where I was staying, I was looking through and they were sending out emails like saying we're only taking on um, essential workers now, which is due to the government guidelines. Um, yeah. if you can't prove that you're an essential worker you will be turned away and we reserve the right to cancel your booking at any time so I was properly dreading it like walking in and saying well this is where I am this is what I'm doing this is why I'm doing it and I'm going no it's not good enough off you go and I'm being stuck four hours away from home with nothing to do or anything like oh that oh my god yeah that so would be really there. sucky yeah, I got there like trying to make up stories because like we do a lot of work for the water board and all that kind of thing. And it's like, well, they can't get their new vans if I don't do my job and everything, you know, going through it in my head. I walked up to the reception desk and I went, hi, I've got a room under Jason Martin. She went, oh, yeah, OK, there's your key. <laughs> yeah, I think they've got it into their heads now that if you are actually going there, then you do actually have something to do. It's not like anybody's going to be going on a holiday at this point, hopefully. So. They're just getting on with it. You'd think that. I've seen them queuing for the Euros. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jesus, good point. I saw an advert <laughs> today as well for the, um, what's it called now? The Euro Tunnel, the Channel Tunnel, whichever it's called, which is like advertising going to France by car because they don't want you to go through airports and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to leave your car and it reduces the spread. It's like, well, don't go to France. I I've seen someone drive to Switzerland and then from Switzerland drive to France. Mm. Yeah, on the ferry. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... Yeah. Unless you're doing it for work, I don't see why you do anything like that now. Anyway, bitching aside, <laughs> we're here to talk about <laughs> movies, as per usual. Um, just saying, just before we came on, it's not really been that much news this week, has there? We had quite a nice spurt last week, but this week has been, uh, been pretty dead. No. Mm. It's been so, kind of the, the the way it's gone through the whole lockdown is one week's piled with news and one week's there's there's not much to get hold of. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I think like hopefully once the cinemas start up again and everybody's back into filming, um, mm. saying some other stuff like uh, the Lord of the Rings TV series that's starting filming again next week in New Zealand. I think. I think they've so. been lining that up for a while, though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's, been, that kind of, that's been floating around for a while, but I think uh, New Zealand's population is, must have doubled before all the film crews heading there is finished the bloody... I know, right? got to Scotland. <laughs> yeah. There's no, no deaths in Scotland, is there? I know, but I don't know if we're allowed in. <laughs> 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 like, border, <laughs> seriously, I think there's like border restrictions, isn't there? Which well, is it's, like, a... it's kind of understandable because talking about New Zealand, they didn't have any new cases for like a week, did they? And then yeah. they had two, both British tourists that turned up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are now we are now that good at coronavirus that we're exporting it to other countries for them. <laughs> you think you beat it? No, love. <laughs> we're here. <No. laughs> <laughs> Which is really we're here to ruin your day. Yeah. I think over the next couple of weeks, everything's going to start going back into production again. So hopefully we're going to start seeing like a constant stream of news in a couple of weeks as well. That DC fandom kicks off. So after that, I think that's going to go on for, well, that goes on for like a full day and there's going to be so many announcements and interviews and stuff coming out of there. It's yeah, just going to be ridiculous for like the next week. I think we're probably going to have to do a DC special on the week that that is. We've been talking about doing one for a while, haven't we? Because we're both like yeah. hit or miss when it comes to the DC movie universe and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, uh, I, 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 I definitely think it's. I definitely think it's definitely one in the pipeline, though. Yeah, I think like yeah, it's in a couple of weeks. I don't know when it lands. I think it might land on my movie that week. So I'll choose something from the DC universe, and then we'll just spend like an hour and a bit talking about everything to do with DC and what's going yeah. on. Yeah, actually got a bit to talk about about that later on as well. So said so that that 
news is keeping us going because <laughs> it's pretty much never ending every 20 minutes to doing something else it's well good um but so first off um jamie fox i don't know when this was announced i think it's been uh quite recent i think it might have been like a couple of weeks ago uh, but we've not mentioned it yet uh jamie fox is lined up and is definitely playing mike tyson in an autobiographical movie about the boxer are you a fan of Mike Tyson? <laughs> oh, as a boxer, incredible, but yeah, you know, incredible boxer. Mm. Um, and, and he looks incredible. He could have just replayed himself because he looks in incredible shape now. Well, he's talking about he's, doing a comeback, isn't he? That's yeah. what all the training and stuff like that's about. And he's like, what is he? He's like 50 odd now. I think he's early in mid 50s, 53, isn't he? 53, I think. Holy shit, man. And he looks. Better than Incredible. I've ever looked in my entire <laughs> life ever. I mean, I go to the gym and stuff. I am never going to look as good as that motherfucker looks right now. It's absolutely no. ridiculous. <laughs> no. Um, and um, some of his, some of the training videos that he's put up on Instagram and stuff are just brutal, aren't they? Oh, they're absolutely not. See, just, like you can even imagine even moving that quick at fifty-three. No. It's it, it's it's ridiculous. It, honestly, it's unbelievable. Like. Um, but um, in terms of Jamie Foxx playing him, and Jamie Foxx looks like a trim guy though already, though, don't he? It doesn't look like he'll yeah. need to do too much in the gym. I don't know. I think he'll have to bulk up and try and like yeah, pull himself it, out it, a little bit more. Because he's, he's yeah. quite little and just massively broad, isn't he, Mike Tyson? Whereas Jamie Foxx seems, I think he's about like six foot three, something like that. Oh, really? Is he actually tall? I'm not too sure. I might be getting him confused with something else. Let's have a Google, shall we? How tall is Jamie Foxx? <laughs> um, but yeah, like the one thing that popped into my head was, isn't he a convicted rapist, Mike Tyson? <laughs> uh, was he actually? Uh, I'm not too sure on that. See, that's what I couldn't remember. And I didn't really want yeah. to Google it because <laughs> you start Googling <laughs> things like that. Well, Your targeted ads and stuff just really go downhill fast. I think he's, he's always said that he obviously he hasn't done it in which you know you would but i'm not actually sure what he's actually put in prison for yeah so i know he was definitely um he was definitely accused of it but whether he actually got convicted or anything along those lines i'm not too sure but that's is, is that going to be in there do you think <laughs> <laughs> what can the actual rape? Well, no, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> everything surrounding it. Hopefully, they don't film that. That'd be that'd be the fucking worst. <laughs> but um, I mean, like as a, a person in general, he's oh, Mike Tyson, man. He's just he's got fucking tigers. He's, he's dead flamboyant and stuff. But he's just yeah. Ugh. I think he's always been a little mad, though, isn't he? Like um, yeah, you've got he's, to be to bite someone's ear off, haven't you? Yeah, that's what I mean. And then and he's the worst. He just seems like the worst kind of person. I've seen some of his podcasts too, and he's he's very he's he's hard to watch. Yeah, he's very bizarre as a person. Very yeah. just completely completely odd. Oh yeah, just exactly. Seen him on not all, And you generally don't know if he's going to lose it or not. <laughs> If he's been, you know, you generally don't know if he's been, you know, he's been serious or not. And he's, um, he's yeah. laughing and joking away, and you know, they're all smoking and everything like that. And then it, you don't know if he's going to switch. That's the that's the mad thing, like about him. But um, that's if you get punched in the head for a living and then do that much cocaine, I, I reckon and, <laughs> that has definitely got to do something to you, doesn't it? <laughs> Jimmy Fox is going to have to work. Damn hard. Like, does anyone even know if he can actually box? Uh, I don't know. I imagine he's going through a hell of a lot of training for it. For a couple of million, yeah. man, you get punched in the face every week, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think I, I, what you kind of read of like when um, Will Smith did Ali, he mm. kind of went through hell. Yeah, yeah. You know, training wise and stuff like that, and making sure that he, he knew what he was doing and kind of can box a little bit, but. Mm. I think really? I think that's the suffering because he's taking on such an iconic figure that you've got to you've got to be able to box a little, I imagine. Yeah, At least um, look like you can box a little. 
It's not just that as well, is it? I mean, it's, he's not a guy that you want to piss off. No. <laughs> like, not like yeah, you say. Yeah, wrong. Yeah, like you say, if he's, he does seem a little bit all over the place. I mean, he, he has bitten someone's ear off. He's like either been accused of or dead, like a convicted rapist and all that kind of thing. It's not that's not the kind of guy you want to fuck off. <laughs> and, he, and he has got a tiger to feed you to as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty dicey. Yeah. I remember like um, I was watching and I, I just had to look it up. It's Michael B. Jordan who's in uh, the Creed movies. Do you know, like the follow on yeah, from Rocky yeah. where he's training them up. Um, and they were talking about the second one where he fights um, Ivan Drago's son. And I've, I've yeah. not seen it yet, but I remember watching an interview with him and he did a lot of boxing training. Um, and he said, like, most of it obviously is stage fighting and things like that and they're getting it right. But there was one that was a very um, up-close, slow-motion punch that he had to take. And they were saying, the only way we'll be able to get this shot and make it look even remotely right is if he punches you in the face. <laughs> And apparently the guy who was playing uh, Apollo, um, I just said his fucking name, <laughs> Ivan Drago's son, was like a proper heavyweight boxer. Um, and he had to just let him punch him in the face, like, like properly, full force, so he looked like he took it. And he probably did it at like half power, but he said it was horrible. He said it just knocked him sparkle for about two or three seconds, and then he woke up and he was back around with it and stuff. So, but the I remember, amazing. yeah, I've seen that interview and him saying that actually actually knocks him out and you go, oh, fair play, you're taking your role. Yeah, to yeah, that's absolute it. limits there, aren't you? <laughs> you're taking yeah, a crack. Because exactly. <laughs> there was a lot of that stuff, like in the Rocky movies and stuff, you hear about them about proper beating the shit out of one another, don't you? So if they're going to do a film like that, they really do go through it. And like with Tyson as well, it's... Uh, mm. He's brutal. He's fast. He was an incredible boxer. But like I was saying, I don't know whether the film is going to focus on all the controversy that surrounds him as a person as well. I think the I think it will hit more the controversial. It's it's the story and it. You know, everyone knows he was a great boxer, but the real story is the whole whack whack old Mike, Mike Tyson persona that he's kind of got and. I think because I've seen loads of documentaries over him, and they're all the, the, the brilliant documentaries, by the way. But um, yeah, it, I, I don't think you can go too wrong because there's so much to do and so much to write and so much to that, that, that they can just put out there. You know what I mean? I think it'd be pretty good, actually. Yeah, it'll definitely be an interesting watch. I'd like to see what they'll do with it. Um, at the minute, apparently, he's in real, real big training at the moment to bulk up even more so to get uh, that Mike Tyson physique down. I imagine he's doing nothing but boxing training and stuff like that. So it's, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be quite a good one, that, when it finally comes out. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I think it'd be, I, I, I'll, I'll definitely be watching it. Anyway, I'm, I'm a huge fan of these kind of sports, kind of documentary kind of things. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely right up my street, that kind of thing. Ah, you were reading about another one, weren't you, before that you mentioned, just before? Yeah, the, uh, well, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the same thing, though, isn't it? It's the same yeah. thing. So um, Chris Helm Helmsworth is doing the same thing. He's going to be playing Hulk Hogan. Now, <laughs> this is, I, th I think this is in a Netflix film. Right, right, for Netflix. Like, I don't, I didn't know similar kind about. of thing to what they're doing with Mike Tyson. And, yeah. um, and he's been saying that he has to bulk up even more than what he does before. That's and bonkers. He, he's in utterly incredible shape for far. Mm. Now, the only thing I was like is that I don't think anyone realises actually how big Hulk Hogan was. Yeah. And I looked it up before and I didn't actually know he was six foot seven. Holy shit, that's insane. Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ. I mean, Chris Evans is a big bloke, but he doesn't look six foot seven big. No, really not. Even, you know, physically he's a big bloke, and there's no problem. I don't think getting to the bulk of Hulk Hogan is going to be a problem for him. But the actual stature of Hulk Hogan, uh, this giant of a man, I'm not sure how it's going to kind of come across, because even... Like Chris, uh, Chris Helmsworth is six foot two, I think, and I think I think that's quite a difference. You know what I mean? It is massively noticeable. I'm like uh, six foot one, 
and um, I've got a mate who I think he's six foot four, and that is really, really noticeable how much bigger he is than me when we stood next to one another. So, yeah. like, that's an extra what two or three inches on top of that that, uh, yeah. that he's got to pretend to be. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be nearly. He's got to be five another. He's got to be five inches. <laughs> he's got to look five inches more. But um, what they'll have to do is they'll just have to hire short actors. To, to play around him so everybody else is just a little bit shorter so it makes him look even bigger <laughs> that's great casting though chris hemsworth i think it'll be mint it's oh, great no. casting it is great casting like I, again another iconic like me and you like it, it, a proper in our wrestling where we were back in yeah. our day and that's it it's, it, it's almost as iconic as you can get and is the First real superstar, isn't he, Hulk Hogan? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Him and uh, they need a decent Ultimate Warrior to go up against him. But I'm <laughs> really keen to see this movie. Who would that be? Jason Momoa would be a good Ultimate Warrior, wouldn't he? Imagine that. Oh, wouldn't he, Joss? Holy shit, that'd be ace. Jason yeah. Momoa is actually huge, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would actually be a really good Ultimate Warrior. And then you're going to have to find a real tall guy to play under the giant, though, aren't you? The fucking hell, yeah. Oh, I'll probably be just a guy right now. I'll probably just a normal tall guy. Yeah. Because, <laughs> just to make Chris Evans look taller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try and make him all on regular size. Either that, I like dig a pit or have him stood on a box or like have heels on or some shit just to give him like <laughs> that extra bit. <laughs> I yeah. hope it follows his movie career as well, because I want to see Chris Hemsworth doing Hulk Hogan, doing Suburban Commando. That would be so oh, good. He didn't have a good movie career, did he, Hulk Hogan, no? <laughs> really not. I think he was only in about three or four films, wasn't he? And they were all just... He was, he was just Hulk Hogan in them all. <laughs> yeah. I watched... I, I seen a film years and years ago when I was like, holy crap, Undertaker's done a film. <laughs> and it's the, the worst films you've ever seen in your life excellent that's what I like I do like wrestlers branching out some of them are really really good but other ones are just like ugh. John Cena's doing alright isn't he I think he's found his niche he was in uh, last thing I saw him in or remember watching him in was Bumblebee I think he was really really good in that he played like a little bit comic relief a little bit of a laugh yeah John Cena was kind of like John Cena as a wrestler was after me watching it, yeah. I kind of switched off before John Cena turned up, but like what he kind of did didn't uh, you know of him in the wrestling? What he kind of did in wrestling, he, he, he kind of you knew you knew rock, yeah, basically superstar in, in the wrestling. Then he's Moving actually he, he, doing he's, really well, he's, he's really good, he's funny too, yeah, exactly. Really, really he's funny. There. He's do he's done a film. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't think it's out yet. With a guy called uh, Joel Kirkman, who is he played the Robo the uh, Robocop in the new remake, and he was in the first series of Altered Carbon. He was like the main right. guy in that. And so I'm actually a really really big fan of this what? dude, Joel Kirkman, and he was what? talking is... about. Sorry, go on. No, go on. You finish up. Um, he was talking about John Cena, working with him, and he said they went to the gym together. And was spotting for one another and he said like he was outlifting him by like two times and he's a big guy this joel um yeah. and he, john cena was outlifting him like twice so he's like ah oh, yeah you'd expect that he's a big dude all he does all night his workout his diet and everything is really really focused on making him a really really big guy of course he's going to be able to lift more than me but a better more flexible than he is and he said the next minute he just puts the weights down and then john cena just goes into a perfect full split <laughs> <laughs> just didn't even bat an eyelid just slid down into it like nothing he's just like like a dick threw his towel at him and walked out <laughs> but that I, I, there's something about him that I really really like you know as a yeah. as a person he comes across as, as he's always seems to be always up for laughing the roles that he's no shame no no you know, in, in, in the roles that he plays he's, he, he's not bothered he's got no shame so and, and that's what I kind of, you get that real likability about him, don't you? Yeah, he comes across as a really nice guy as well. You know, he's got the all-time record for um, Make-A-Wish Foundation visits. Oh, know, really? like, yeah, so Make-A-Wish Foundation is the company that um, grants wishes to terminally ill kids. Um, 
most loads of them are obviously into the wrestling. Uh, a lot of them asked to see John Cena, and he goes to see pretty much every one of them. And he's got the all-time record for the most stuff done with Make-A-Wish Foundation. So that tells you what kind of guy he is, doesn't it? It's, it's quite That's amazing. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the Hulk Hogan movie, um, hopefully it's on Netflix, like you say, because I'd be really into seeing that. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, oh, absolutely. Because who's your, who's your favourite wrestler of all time? All time? Probably Ultimate Warrior. Don't know why. He was always because he always used to do the press, didn't he? When he had him above his head. <laughs> yeah. One, yeah. two, three. Rah! Yeah, uh, yeah. Probably Ultimate Warrior. Got a big soft spot for Undertaker as well. Hulk's obviously right up there. Yeah. How about you? Oh, absolutely. Um. Oh, Stone Cold was one that got that got you. One it just. And yeah. the first one was actually Bret Hart. Oh man. Because he was he was such. Yeah, he, like he took it to another level. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. And I was like, yeah, that was kind of bang on my ear when when Bret Hart was out. But yeah, then obviously you know everyone kind of likes The Rock, don't they? So <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can't go anywhere. <laughs> can't go anywhere without mentioning The Rock. He needs to redeem no, himself after that shit that we made it, that I made you watch the other month. <laughs> <laughs> Still not going with that. Hobbs and Shaw. Still on on Sky, isn't it? Oh god. <laughs> 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 haunt me forever. <laughs> <laughs> Awfulness. Awfulness. Um, yeah. Right. So, uh, on from Hulk Hogan, a little like I was saying before, there is uh, some more DC news this week, but I don't know how true it is. Um, it's only being reported by quite small movie sites, um, bigger than us still, but small. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I, I don't know whether it's got any truth to it or whether it's just a rumour at the minute, but they're saying that Ben Affleck is currently in talks to go back um, as Batman, probably on HBO Max as maybe a series or something along those lines. Yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting, really. To, mm. Yeah, to the, try and... the reports are saying that like they're really, really close to coming to an agreement with him. And I definitely think, I definitely think it's something that Ben Affleck would definitely go for because I don't think he was done with that role. Hmm. No, not by a long shot. No, no, no. I think he was only just getting started with that role. So, and I, I think, I think it's quite a smart move, isn't it? Like a TV kind of show series or whatever you want to call it, actually, and just because like, these kind of shows focus more on the actual main character don't they rather yeah. than yeah that's it and you could do a lot more with it can't you so you can expand on yeah. the character you can explore a lot more different facets of him and stuff yeah definitely it's um like like with the flash it it's so concentrated on the main character that you, you really get to see the in-depths of that actual of where they kind of come from in the, the whole background especially if you're not a, a comic you know, you know, if you've not read the comic books and stuff like that, I think it's yeah. a better way of really introducing the characters made rather than just a one-off movie. And then you, you know, I've watched films of people that don't know anything about comic books and gone, "Well, who's this? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> what's what's going?" On? And you, you know what I mean? If you do a TV series over, a, you know, like over, you know, say ten shows a series and stuff like that, then you get to see. A little yeah. bit more, don't you? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I've just gone back and started watching Gotham again. Was that something that you were ever into? I I I, I watched uh, most of the season one and really enjoyed it. Again, yeah. it's just one of them ones I just I've just never got back to. That's exactly the same, yeah. man. I think I got to like three quarters of the way through season two and then that boom. But um, all five series are on Netflix at the minute, so I've just started them again. I'm really, really enjoying it. Characters in that are yeah, brilliant. Yeah, oh, all, all my brothers absolutely love it. So it's absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best ones they've seen. So, yeah, yeah I, I definitely, definitely need to get back into it because it's not like I wasn't enjoying it. It's just, I just came, you know, you just move on to other stuff and before you know it, you get so deep into something else that you, 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 yeah. you don't have time yeah. all the time, so. But yeah, I, I think I've got to a point where I definitely need something to just jump right back into. 
Yeah. And there's a couple of them, that and um, Stranger Things, where I think I'm just going to go for it and just jump right back in, to be fair. Stranger Things, definitely, mate, because I think the fourth and final season is going to come out, uh, I don't know, hopefully later on this year, maybe a start of next year, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, so, yeah, get through all seasons of that because the next one's yeah. the last one and it's going to be really, really good by the looks of it. So Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely jump onto that. I was always hoping that at the end of Gotham, because obviously it's Batman's origin story and the kid that plays him, yeah. I think he starts off at 15, 16 years old, something like that, and he went for five seasons. So he's about 19, 20 by the time like season five was there. And I think he yeah. both turned into the bat at the end. Well, I'm not really sure. I was hoping they were going to go on from there and do him in a Batman series after that. I thought... Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Well, I wasn't, like... Um, when, I, when I first started watching it, I wasn't too sure how that, you know, how it was going to go because there is some big characters in there already, you know. Yeah, there really from is. Season, from season one. And it kind of goes, oh, holy crap, because you associate Batman as being kind of the same age as all these... Yeah. The other, uh, the other character is, is already in it. And... Um, it shows you in a slightly different way, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's very, it's very clever how they've done it. A lot of, uh, a lot of them are either kids or it's yeah. their parents that are doing all the bad shit, which yeah. is like giving them a bit of background, like you were saying before, on why they're so fucked up when they grow up. It's basically um, James Gordon's, um, Commissioner Gordon's origin story, because he comes, he transfers to uh, Gotham PD at the start. And then right. it's how his career progresses. But obviously he meets all these major villains and works alongside a lot of them. And it's showing you how these villains got to where they are when Batman's about to turn up and kick their ass. Um, so, yeah, I think it's great. The casting in it's amazing as well. Um, but I'm equally as keen to see Ben Affleck back as Batman because he oh. was the most comic realistic Batman for me that there ever has been on, uh, on screen. Apart from the cartoon... <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. live action wise he's been one of the best Batmans for me I, that scene in Batman v Superman uh, where he goes to rescue Clark's mum, that warehouse scene yeah. is just gobsmacking it's... It, no I, honestly Jay if I had a film movie that yeah. It, yeah. It, it's, it, it's so so perfect that's almost like video game stuff Reminded me 100% of like the Arkham Knight game and stuff. Yeah. Oh, it did. It was. It was. It was bang on that. And that's. That's how I think Batman. People like to see Batman just properly, properly kicking some ass, and yeah, it was done. Oh no! Do you know what, Jay? You're right. It it, it was by far the, the best scene of the movie. Yeah, but I mean, even even before that. Like um, when when you just see glimpses of him, where doesn't he free some girls that are being kept hostage in like a little dungeon or something along those lines? And the cops yeah. go in, um, and they're looking around with the light. Then they shine it, and he's up in the corner. I was like, "Fucking hell, that's brilliant!" That's that. Yeah. He, he really epitomises it. The rest of the film around that yeah. is really shit. But <laughs> 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 but Batfleck, yeah, is absolutely brilliant in it. Um, it's he is the only reason that I'll be watching this Zack Snyder cut if it ever materializes. Yeah, even as uh, Bruce Wayne, he's good though. And oh, we've yeah, talked yeah. about this before. Said that you know you've got to play both characters really well, and yeah. I think I think he's really good. He's he's both characters. I think he's great. He's, um, he's yeah. Bruce Wayne and Batman. So yeah, I I hope that these rumors are true. Uh, yeah, me too, mate. Uh, fingers crossed, definitely, that it does something. I think it's all going to depend on how well this um, Snyder Cut does. Uh, it's not just that, because that doesn't really matter anymore, does it? It's fan reaction. So, like, um, yeah. like with Star Wars stuff at the minute, that solo movie that they made, that made millions and millions and millions of dollars at the box office, but the fan reaction wasn't that good. So even though it made enough to justify a sequel, they're not doing it because the fans bitched about it a little bit. And that's kind of where we are yeah. now, which is a bit upsetting. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're definitely letting the fans reel a little bit and it's kind of spoiling some stuff, isn't it? So it's not... Yeah. I yeah. don't think it's sure... They're not showing sure a true reflection of what they can actually do as producers and filmmakers and stuff like that. I think they're just letting 
and the fans aren't always right. It, no, exactly. Exactly. No one knows what they fucking want, do they? At the end of the day, you could, I could piss and moan about stuff that I'd do with different film series and all that kind of stuff, but I might make it and then watch it and go, actually, I was wrong, it's shit. So, <laughs> you, never, you never know. I just wish someone had balls just to go, we're doing three movies, it's going to be this, this, and this. We're definitely doing the three. So, if you like them or not, then they're all going to get made. That, that used to happen all the time and it just doesn't seem to anymore. Yeah, no, true. Um, but, um, yeah. I mean, fan reactions that I've seen to this uh, Affleck news have been really, really positive. People are going mental for it and everybody wants him to come back. Um, if you're Matt Reeves or um, Pattinson, you've got to be a bit annoyed by that, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, because it puts the pressure on them. It'd be even, even more so. It'd be good, do not it? Um, yeah. Well, like, so Matt Reeves is making the Batman film, the next one, and obviously Robert right. Pattinson's been cast as the Batman. Yeah. They are making that like now, as we sit here speaking, and all everybody's talking about is everything else, and people are just fucking ignoring it. They put a few yeah. pictures out of the Batmobile, and it was shit. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it it didn't bother me that actually. I've seen them pictures, and I want I want yeah. not bothered about it. You know what I mean? I'm kind of like, I'm just um, judgment until I see it on screen because you can see pictures of something and it looks terrible, but then when it's actually in the movie and it's in context and it's doing what it should be doing, then it looks amazing. Yeah. Oh, no, like, I, I've changed the way that I look at things. Once, since I've kind of seen um, some great trailers, like mm. uh, Batman vs. Superman was an incredible trailer, <laughs> but the, the film never let, you know, it, 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 the film was, wasn't great, so... And now I kind of go, no, I'm, I, I'll, once I've seen something, then I'll make my judgment and then we'll see then. I'm not going to, just because it's, uh, just because whatever actor's playing it and you don't like them. Yeah. Just, just let, just let's see what it actually comes out to be. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's like everybody has slagged everybody off. Like if you think about all the amazing performances that uh, everybody who gets announced as Batman gets slagged off instantly instantly like keaton was really really vilified in the press and all that kind of thing and everybody that's taken over since then has been vilified um and then some of them are like really really iconic roles uh heath ledger where they announced him as the joker everybody thought it was a piss take and now he's like for me he's like the archetype of what people should be if they're gonna play the joker again yeah yeah it's mad when you get such a fan base of something so popular then you're always going to get stuff like this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you definitely got to suck it and see. But, um, yeah, so I imagine we'll hear some more stuff about that. Whether it's true or not, right now, sat here, I have no idea. I would probably say <laughs> that you it just is. say you got to suck it and see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like I say, sat here right now. It doesn't really sound that true. Nobody big is reporting this news. No, none of the big like movie yeah. um, um, news producers or anything along those lines are reporting it as true at all. Yeah. So I've got my fingers crossed. Though. I really hope he does come back. I really, really loved him as Batman. Everybody's going to be clamouring for it after the Snyder Cut as well. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Great stuff. Um, okay, so bit of a different format for the end of the show this week because we've actually got two movies to have a bit of a chat about because uh, I, t- I messaged Gary last week telling him to watch this film that me and the missus watched and uh, you managed to get that snuck in as well so we thought we'd have a bit of a chat about that <laughs> at the uh, at the same time yeah now coronavirus has robbed a lot from us this year and um, football got cancelled for a couple of months apparently people really miss that because that's something that folks enjoy and um, but i think <laughs> the biggest travesty as everybody can agree is that eurovision was cancelled <laughs> <laughs> this year and we couldn't have a eurovision song contest so thankfully will ferrell stepped up <laughs> and made a film about the eurovision song contest just to fill that gap for us and we managed to watch it <laughs> this week <laughs> <laughs> now, I are you are you a fan of the actual Eurovision Song Contest, or was this just a film that you watched because it was funny and Will Ferrell? Um, years ago, yeah, I can just 
it was it, it, it was kind of one of them things that you watch with your family. Yeah. Um, it was. It, it, we're in the era of when Eurovision did used to be quite fun to watch. Um, <laughs> And yeah. now you kind of just watch it to, to see what madness Eurovision kind of brings. Doesn't it? Like, oh yeah, it's... there's always there's always a headline story from Eurovision, isn't there? Definitely, it's it's, it's always all over the show, and it's we we love it. Me and Fran, like we used to throw a, a party every year, a watch party, and get loads of people around, and then do a sweet yeah. fake where you pick names of the countries out of the hat, and whoever won got like twenty. Oh, that's so fun. Cool. Um, but yeah, we, we used to like make a really, really big deal of it. We've not done it for the past couple of years. Obviously, this year was cancelled, or last year we missed it. But um, yeah. it's brilliant. Just exactly like um, Graham Norton just casually drinks all the way through the live commentary and just is really, really bitchy about all the acts, which really makes it. And then all the acts are just insane, and ridiculous, and yeah. some of them are amazing, but most of them are just ridiculous it's, and yes this film captured all of that so fucking perfectly it was astounding <laughs> it, 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 do what you're right it really did yeah I, when you said about watching it you know watching this film uh, and when i had no idea this film existed by the way i didn't know oh, he was no. making this film nothing no when i'm not told me. No, this film i was like mm. oh god how bad can this be got to watch the trailer <laughs> of this film yeah. and going back to what I was saying before that you shouldn't judge something by the trailer well I actually did in this one so I went this is garbage <laughs> I'm oh, not God. watching it and I, and I, I fully expected to be absolutely turned <laughs> and it really really wasn't it was like you said it absolutely captured the madness of Eurovision perfectly and even had Graham Norton in it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, like you say, I didn't really know anything about this film coming out until uh, I saw the advert on Netflix, and it is called the official title is Eurovision Song Contest: The Story of Fire Saga, <laughs> and uh, Fire Saga is a band <laughs> made up of Will Ferrell and uh, Rachel McAdams, and they're a duo from Iceland, and it's. Been Will Ferrell's dream since he was a kid to win the Eurovision Song Contest, and it's literally all he goes on about. It's nuts. Eurovision <laughs> Song Contest. We must concentrate on Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> I have realised, like quite recently, well, actually, like over the past couple of years, that I don't find anything funnier than people singing stupid songs. As long as the stupid songs are done really, really well and they've got like really high production value. And this song yeah, <laughs> I took, I took, got it bang on for me. It was absolutely perfect. Yeah, I, I love, and you know what? It's everything about it, like um, when they're like, um, so they're back in their own, it's Iceland, their, their own country, and they're in like a bar, aren't they? And they yeah. want to sing the Eurovision Song Contest song. And the <laughs> locals are like, no, no, don't sing that. Sing Yak Ya yeah, Ding Dong. Sing Yak Ya yeah, Ding Dong. <laughs> yeah, he's just like a really crazy fan that only loves just the one song that they've ever um, done. And he's constantly shouting at them to get that. And it's just, oh, it's, it's so good. Because they're like from a really small town way up in Iceland, aren't they? And it's like yeah. whales jumping in the bay and all sorts of stuff. And they're really. Really isolated. His dad yeah. is played by uh, Piers Brosnan, isn't he? <laughs> he's got, by the way, he's got the worst acting. Yeah, and he just uh, he hates it all. Oh. Oh, just wait, my phone's about to die. Very professional. Um, yeah, he hates all of this Eurovision stuff, and uh, just wishes that he'd sort his life out and uh, do something meaningful with his life. But Will Ferrell is that focused; <laughs> he just can't hear anything else, can he? Yeah. No, because the whole way through the film is is his partner who sings a song with him. She yeah. wants to get with Will Ferrell in the film, yeah. doesn't she? She <laughs> throws like she throws absolutely every minute, and he's like, "No, we must concentrate on Eurovision." And it's, it's yeah. like, he's so blind to her coming on yeah. to him, isn't it? All and, it, it. Like, and it is it's even funnier because there is no way in a million years that Will Ferrell would be able to punch that high. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I love it all the way through the film. It's like, because she really wants him, don't she? And then yeah. 
everyone keeps asking, so brother and sister? And, and <laughs> she, she's like, she's like, no, so. we're not brother and sister. <laughs> and Will Farrell was like, I don't think we're brother and sister. <laughs> no, yeah, like, yeah, every time someone asks, not that we know of. It goes full was... circle, all that joke at the end, doesn't it? Because yeah. their mum, his dad and her mum end up getting married, so they do end yeah. up as brother and sister. <laughs> 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 it's just perfectly done but um, it also it stars so many people for, who've been in Eurovision like performers and presenters and everybody along those lines as well it, everybody just really really got involved with this film and I think it really helped it yeah oh, it, it really did the, uh, the guy that played I don't know what country he came from but the, the other dude that won't, we weren't too sure if he was gay or not at the end <laughs> yeah, uh, the Russian that wanted dude. Yeah, yeah. The, that's it. The Russian did. He was excellent too. Yeah, he's he uh, Dan, of... Dan Stevens. He is. He's he's incredible. He's in a really good uh, X Men TV series uh, called Legion, right. which is just oh, it's fucking insane. It's absolutely brilliant. But he he's just amazing. I love the song he does. Is about being a lion, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. got like the four naked dudes on stage. But obviously he's from Russia, so you can't be gay in Russia because it's. It's either against the law or they'll just murder you. So it's uh, it's, it's really, really politically yeah. savvy. Yeah. And like, yeah. he, Will Farrell's character keeps running into a bunch of Americans, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so brilliant. Just really goes in on him. Really, yeah. really slagging him. cost the coffee. <laughs> yeah, told him how terrible America is. But every time, and this happens like four or five different times, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I really loved as well how, like, matter of fact, they are about like the weirdest shit. So when they're like they're going into the qualifying stages, and uh, Will Ferrell's sticking a sock down the front of his uh, <laughs> down the front of his leotard, isn't he? And she walks in and finds him, and he, he she goes like, "What are you doing?" And he basically goes, "Oh, I stick this sock down just so it makes my penis look bigger." And it's just like he just. <laughs> A fact about it, and she goes, Oh, what should I do? Should I go for the classic camel toe and starts like writing a leaf down right up? <laughs> so she, he's like, Oh, everybody loves a camel toe, yeah. It is when they uh, go in the Russian dude's house and he's got them Greek sculptures of himself, <laughs> like, really long, big penis. <laughs> 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 yeah, I bet he's excellent in bed. I bet he's a very good lover. Just like really, really matter of fact and deadpan about it. I bet that took so long to film because it, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, I, I, and do you know what, Jay? It was it's so watchable. Yeah. Like I'd happily watch it again. Yeah, I think I'm happy. Uh, we've got. I, I, yeah. Go. On. Uh, we've got the soundtrack. <laughs> oh, have you? The track is brilliant. <laughs> it's like if you sing, sing a song, the first song you see is that volcano man, isn't it? Where he's dressed up on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a volcano man, and it's just, it's it's so well done. The production value is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I did say she would play Yeah Yeah Ding Dong as our theme tune. I love it that much. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm really, really dodgy about it. That's why I won't wear like anything with labels on or anything along those lines because um, YouTube and stuff like that's really shit off. And you just take your videos. Oh, yeah. And I did like a, a few videos a couple of years ago reviewing films and stuff uh, where I'd been um, so sort of like I'd, I'd, I had like a cinema pass. So I'd go and watch something and then I'd make a little video saying what I thought about it. But I'd always put like the poster in or some pictures or I'd put uh, the advert in as well. Um, and yeah, all loads of them got taken down because of it. All oh like, yeah, the, 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 there's a whole list of stuff that you can't actually do. So uh, any sort of copywriting and stuff like that. You, yeah, yeah. You so can't always, play always, any of it at all, can you? Yeah, because I always want to put pictures on here. You know, like stuff we've been talking about. Like put the film posters up and things like that. But I'm not too. I'm really not sure. I've got a friend yeah. who's got a YouTube channel who does it. Who's got stuff like that up all the time. And none of his stuff ever gets taken down, so I think I'll uh, have a word with him, see what he does. Yeah, definitely. There's obviously a way of doing it if he's managing to do it. He's like, he said, it's nothing massive and official either. It's just his own private channel that he loves doing. Um, 
Right. Talk, I'm going to talk to him about it. Anyway, yeah, getting a bit off topic. Um, I thought it was a great film. <laughs> um, I was really iffy about it because, like I say, I know Fran loves the Eurovision Song Contest, but I also know that she hates Will Ferrell. So I can't, I've got to like sneak Will Ferrell in whenever she goes out somewhere. <laughs> so I can I only watch Anchorman it. when she's not in the house and stuff. Oh my God. So, like, I seen that post and I was like, how can you not like Will Ferrell? I don't think she's got a soul. I think she might actually be dead on the inside. Um, uh, I've seen that and I thought, Jay, dump her <laughs> now. <laughs> right, back your shit. Um, but she really, yeah, she really loved it as well. Um, it's got really bad reviews. Loads of like a, a big time reviewers have watched this and just really, really panned it and slagged it off, which I was very surprised about. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that they slagged it off. Yeah. Obviously, these people don't get the whole Eurovision thing. For me. Yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I don't want to have to suggest you know, go and watch it. I don't want to post it. We're watching it, and when you see it on Facebook, like yes. I said, a lot, every single one of them will love it. Mm. Anyone that I know has watched it said it's brilliant. Yeah, exactly so, right. It seems to be going over quite good in America as well, which, like you say, is quite surprising because they don't really get Eurovision over there. So no, it's, it, I, 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 it's, I, it's, it's all that people are kind of talking about at the minute. It's, it's. One of the most watched things at the moment on Netflix, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I don't get why people are slagging it off because I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, same here. It was absolutely amazing. Um, score out of five, you do one of them? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it a four as well. Exactly the same. It was absolutely yeah. brilliant. <laughs> I yeah. really, really enjoyed every single bit of it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did, and I, I, I kind of, um, I've been too kind with some scores, so yeah, um, yeah, so that, yeah, so that because I kind of worked out that, um, because we're doing half points, if you work it out at ten, eight's a good score. Yeah, exactly. So four, yeah, because I've, I've given stuff and gone. If I work that out at ten, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't quite right the score. So yeah, four's been bang on for me. Yeah, excellent. I'm going to have to update the thing because I started doing them on a bit of a spreadsheet, but I've fallen behind with it a little bit. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to rewatch some to remember the scores that we've given because I was <laughs> on the phone. But now we've got um, we're on uh, Instagram Live as well at the same time while we're recording this. Yeah. Um, so can't use my phone to do that anymore. So yeah, yeah. I'll just sort that out on a, on a spreadsheet. Um, and now, uh, yeah, onto the other movie that we were watching this week, which was Natural Born Killers. Did you manage to get to watch it? I watched it, yeah. Yeah? It's... This is, before you get going, <laughs> this is one of my all-time favourite films. Like, the reason I've got tattoos there is because they have them in the movie. I've got different ones, obviously, because they're not really a role model that you want to look up to. Uh, but, but, yeah, so uh, I've, I've loved this film for years and years. I've always thought it was amazing. What about you? Right. Um... <laughs> It, it's utter, utter, utter mad. Yeah. Um, which you fully expect from Quentin Tarantino. It is That's nuts. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. God, how long have we been going for? My batteries. That'd be good. Um, it, it's, it's nuts. Um, I found it hard going to watch it first because I was like, is this how they're filming? It, it, it takes a while to get used to how, he, how he's filming it. Yeah. Um, how much it jumps all over the place, and you go, no, this is actually, this is actually, this is how I, I was so lost in it at first, and then I was like, no, this is it. They're just going from they're on a bit of a run, and uh, they're on a bit, they're on a murder streak, and they, they they go and kill people and leave one person behind on it to tell the story. Tell the story, on. and and. Yeah. Once you kind of grasp what's kind of going on, I did find myself enjoying it. Like it's like the performances of I don't know who the, the girl is. I did look it up, but she's incredible. Julia, and I was I, I, and at first I was like, it's very Harley Quinn Joker. It, oh, massively, 
massively. I was like, I couldn't believe it. So Harley Quinn and Joker, she mentally nuts. Yeah, yeah. He's nuts, but smart. Yeah, yeah. He's and I was like, nice and in control and stuff, and it's. Uh, oh, yeah, I couldn't believe the resemblance to. To that, she it, yeah, no, she was phenomenal in it, and um, just what I didn't know is Robert Darren Jr. is in it either. Yeah. He proper it, swings for the fences in that movie, doesn't he? <laughs> is oh, it like the guy he plays? So, um, so right. So, if you've not seen the film, it's basically uh, about a couple called Mickey and Mallory. It's it's basically a love story, but really fucked up because Mickey yeah. and Mallory are both uh, mass murderers. And like Gary was saying, they go around from place to place. They basically go on a killing spree. Um, killing groups of people but then leaving one of them alive to tell the story and then to carry on um, and then it goes on from there and like the last third of the film really switches gears because they end up getting arrested and end up in prison and that's where Robert Downey Jr's character comes in and um, he is a TV show uh, a, a TV show host um, about murderers and about like the prolific multiple murderers in America um, and he goes in this prison to interview Mickey, who's um, the guy character played by, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, yeah. How good does Woody Harrelson look in this film? <laughs> he, look, he looks tremendous in the film, actually. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And he's, oh, he is actually excellent in the film, too. Yeah, yeah so um, then he goes in to uh, prison where Mickey and Mallory are being kept to interview him for this TV show. Um, the prison warden is Tommy Lee Jones, who's also play, whose performance is also just crazy. He plays this insane warden who's just all over the place, and he's like, he, like the pair of them just really, really go for it. Uh, and then all hell breaks loose, and they end up escaping, which is just like for me, like the last half an hour of that movie is some of the best, <laughs> some of the best cinema going experience I've ever seen. The last half an hour of that was by far the best part of the film. Mm. But it, <laughs> some of that, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. It's all nuts. You've got, the, Rob, you've got the guy filming it for his TV show and he's happily just filming cops getting murdered and stuff like that. And you go, well, well that, just, that just wouldn't, it wouldn't happen even for ratings. <laughs> just yeah, that's it, because they pipe them through um, onto the network news, don't they? So he's got a, a camera on his shoulder and he's filming yeah. it live while they're going through this prison in the middle of a massive prison riot and they're basically breaking out. But like Gary said, there's just shootouts around every corner and people getting killed and splattered up the wall and all sorts of stuff all the way through it, all going out yeah. live on TV. It, it, it's just imagination, mental madness. It's not, yeah. none of it's. I don't know because it, it, it's just weird because there's certain things you just go well I'm not, I can't, some of it I just couldn't take seriously because I just like they just wouldn't escape that way <laughs> you know what I mean you just yeah, it, we end up so we end up with um, two shotguns Woody Harrelson yeah. takes two shotguns to his hand and then tapes them to a guard's head and tapes them to Robert Downey Jr's head and he basically walks right out the front door of this prison holding the triggers of two shotguns to these two hostages. Um, and the, the, the idea is you've got no choice but to let them go. But there's bits in it where it's like, well, he could have just shot him in the head right there. Could have just shot her right there. Could have just... Uh, so the, there is yeah. a lot of stuff like that that goes to the yeah. end. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the whole film is basically a stab around that kind of media culture and how bad it is. Because obviously, like in America, is something that we don't get over here at all it's like they televise car chases don't they on the news whenever there's a car chase on going down the freeway yeah. look it over to a news channel you'll be able to watch them do it yeah. and it's it's always like a big stab at that and how um all multimedia um all the media portrays serial killers and stuff like that and makes them famous because when mickey and mallory are going into court they've all got fans outside haven't they there's like hundreds of people yeah. cheering for him and screaming for him and they've killed like 56 people all innocent people, all in cold blood, and um, people holding signs saying "Mickey, murder me now" and all this kind of stuff. It's just a real good stab at oh, that. Oh yeah, what's going on? 
Yeah, th and I, that's that's another part where I found really weird mm. when I'm watching. It, it's like, why you, why you got a sign saying murder me now? Yeah, yeah, it's, that's it. Yeah, it, it's and but even though there is a lot of things that you go, well, that doesn't make sense, and that doesn't make sense. That you just kill them. He, you know, when it when that uh, Mickey's in prison and they're doing. Uh, the filming him asking him questions and stuff like that. You go, well, he'll be chained up. Because in that, he just stands up, starts telling this joke, doesn't he? It's all kind of part of how he, he skates, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely and He's got amazing. no chains on his legs, arms, you know. Like, and I know it's you know, it's a film, but it, it, parts of it didn't make sense, but yet I was still enjoying watching it. Yeah. I was enjoying watching Madness. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's crazy. It's um, it's really genius as well the way they film some bits because a lot there's a lot of crazy cuts in it, and they like you say. So like, <clears throat> it flashes over to like a cartoon of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there's this stuff like where it's supposed to be in their head and showing like the madness and shows them as the demons that they think they are and things like that. And then there is a big bit which is filmed like um, like a seventies sitcom, where it flashes back to when Mallory's younger. And it tells the story mm -hmm. of how they met, and it's got like oh, a, yeah. it's got like a laughter track behind it and everything along those lines, and it's set up just like a sitcom, isn't it, with Mallory's family? Yeah. And it's, it's really really weird to watch because it's it basically portrays yeah. the fact that her dad beats her, and rapes her basically, and he uh, he's abusing the entire family with the exception of maybe the son, but it's filmed in such a way that it kind of really takes you out of it, doesn't it? Because it's like. Yeah. He'll say something, and then there'll be like canned laughter, as if it's filmed in front of an audience or something along those lines. Yeah, it, it, it's it's filmed mad, but because of the way it's filmed, it just sucks you in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And it it really takes you to that that point, you know, of, of how she must have felt during, you know, yeah. like you can you can see why she wanted to, or why they did go and kill a dad and kill a mom and. And it's, it, it really drags you really in a little bit. Like um, the scene in the hotel room and they're just getting about the business. Like normally you go, all right, they're getting about the business. It's a little wacky. You know, you can see stuff, you know, like whatever they're watching, it's on the walls in the background, isn't it? How it's filmed. And and then the next minute they cut to the girl, there's a girl in the car. <laughs> it's like they have captured a girl. But they're getting about, and that it, it really, it's quite powerful that moment because you go, this is how insane they actually are. Yeah, they get yeah. about their normal business and yet there's a girl tied up in the corner <laughs> through that whole scene. Yeah, you, didn't, you, didn't, you don't see it coming at all. It's absolutely mental. Yeah, it's really crazy. Like I say, I think it's really, really well done. It's definitely a movie that needs to be experienced rather than just sitting and watching it. You know what I mean? It kind of really, yeah. really sucks you in and drags you in and it makes you feel dirty in places but it's supposed to do that and they do like um these like flashbacks at certain points isn't there where it shows like woody harrelson as a kid and he sees his dad commit suicide and things so it really gives yeah. like a lot of backstory to all the characters and pretty much every single character in it is horrible aren't they there's, there's like so there's like the warden who abuses his power and abuses the inmates of the prison there is um the the, the like tv media guy you will do basically anything for ratings, like you said. There's the cop, that's Scagnetti, who at one yeah. point you see him murder a prostitute, don't you? Because he's like, he's, he's just fucked. No. <laughs> and then he's, he's talking about the fact that he saw his mum killed when he was younger and stuff. So it's a really, really interesting like case study on like, no one's really good. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. like seriously a piece of shit. It's just what level of piece of shit you want to take it to. And what, what I did find about the film is that the ending's very clever. Yeah, definitely. Because they've got uh, the guy that's filming it, and it's just the three of them, Mallory, um, is it Mickey? Mickey and yeah. the guy that's, you know, filming it for his show, TV show. He's covered in blood, and he's kind of filming a bit of them and a bit of him and, and what have you. And uh, then they go, well, right, this last bit we're going to, like blow your brains out and he's like well hold on a minute you leave one victim to, so they can tell the story and they're like yeah it's your video camera and yeah. I thought that, that was yeah. really really smart ending really 
Yeah, because there's the point where he like Robert Downey Jr. goes through like the whole range of emotions there, because they basically just they aim the camera at him, don't they? And then obviously the pair of them are pointing the shotguns at him, and he's crying, he's begging, he's pleading. At one point he tries to run away, and then it all comes to an end, and he just goes, "What else can I do?" And just kind of accepts it, doesn't he? Accepts his yeah. fate. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. And then it cuts like right at the end of the movie. It kind of cuts to them in like a big Winnebago with like three kids. <laughs> As if they're just like, all right, fuck it, we'll just leave it there. Yeah. And then crack on. I, yeah, I, it's, yeah. It was just that, that, that is, again, it's another thing being around and, oh, they actually got away, did they? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's just gone. The most known killers in the world, and they yeah. Well, they won in the end. <laughs> that yeah. never happens. Yeah, amazing. It's um for me, like I think probably my favourite bit in the, uh, the movie. It's like when you were saying about before he when he starts telling that joke just before then as well. Um, he's basically sat in a cell surrounded by all the um all like the production company and stuff like that, isn't he? And he's getting interviewed, and it's going out live this mm. it's apparently it's like right after the super bowl so there'll be millions and billions of people watching um and he's interviewing uh woody harrelson's character and then there's a bit in it where he asks him something and he just kind of goes like shit i'm a natural born killer and then it oh, comes yeah. to a break and then that's what starts the entire riot isn't it so obviously like mm. for some reason he's let all the inmates watch this interview live <laughs> which is probably like the most uh, most unbelievable bit because yeah, everybody, everybody who's in the rec room is watching this interview with Mickey and he's uh, he's, he's basically been telling the truth about like, what he feels and why he does what he does and the fact that he doesn't really fucking care. And he's, he's talking about being more evolved and saying, like, everybody, everybody's a murderer, really. I just accept it and get on with it <laughs> and that kind of yeah. stuff. And then he ends, with that, yeah. he ends with that natural born killer line and it just goes, <laughs> everything erupts. And then he's just left in that room and starts telling telling that big long joke to distract him, and then gets all of somebody's shotgun, yeah. and it all goes wild. It's it, yeah, yeah, really, really love that bit. <laughs> so, uh, natural born killers uh, marks out of five. So I struggle with, with the marks here because yeah. I can see why people would go that four, like you know, four, like some of the performances deserve the four. And I can also see why people go two. Yeah. So I have to give it a three. Oh, nice. You come right in the middle. I like it. I, I went. I had to go right in the middle. I really struggled with the score on it because I, I didn't know whether it was a really good film or not. <laughs> yeah. I, and I can see. I can see both arguments for it. So I've gone three. Oh, that's mega. I like that. I really like that. Um, yeah, I'm going yeah. with that because, like I say, it's been one of my favourite movies for years and years. Um, I, I, I still love it. Loved watching it the other day. In fact, I ended up buying it because I enjoyed it. I, I rented it and I was like, no, I need to buy it. So I can sit down and watch it again. <laughs> well, that was the other reason why I didn't go for because I, I wouldn't go back to it again. I've, yeah, kind, yeah. I've kind of had that experience of the film. Yeah. And it's not one I would just go, right, I'm going to dig that back out again. Nice. I like it. Very cool. Yeah, so that is a natural born killers for you. So um, I think we are pretty much at the end now. Uh, Gaza, it is your turn to choose a movie this week. Yeah, um, hold on, I've got it, yeah. So I've gone new. Um, I think it's a bit more serious than kind of what we've done before. Sweet. Uh, and I'm so hard to pick a film because I feel like you've watched everything. <laughs> so. I do try, yeah. I'm very lonely. So I've gone for... <laughs> I've gone for Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems? Mm, excellent. Yeah. So it's it's on Netflix. It's new on Netflix. It's with Adam Sandler. Ah, uh, yes. That's why I've heard of it. Uh, yeah, excellent. Right. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, so uh, Uncut Gems is going to be our movie for next week. So watch it and then tune in for us to be talking shit about it. Uh, in a very spoilery way, as you've just seen there. Uh, um, other yeah. than that, uh, that's pretty much us for this week. Give us a follow on uh, Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube. You can download the podcast on iTunes or on SoundCloud. 
Um, I think we're on Twitter and Instagram as well. So yeah, just follow us, give us a like, give us a share everywhere. Uh, throw us a comment every now and again. It's always good to hear from everybody. But until next week, uh, thank you very much for watching. Cheers, Gaza. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Thanks for everyone for watching. Cheers, thank you. No worries. I shall see you next week. <laughs>